All right, in this video, we're going to see the methodology for double integrals over general regions. And the example we'll look at has a function x squared times e to the xy. And we're integrating over the general region d, um, which is shown in the picture as a triangle. Um, in quadrant one, uh, one side is on the y-axis from the origin to zero one. Um, one side is parallel to the x-axis along the line y equals one from x equals zero to two. And then uh, the third side is uh, the diagonal line y equals one half x from the origin to the point two one. And sometimes you're just given a description of these regions or you're just given their boundaries. If that's the case, then the first thing you want to do is draw uh, a two-dimensional diagram of that region to help you with the rest of this process. We already have that diagram here. So um, just like with the rectangular regions, we're going to try to set up into two different types um, where we look at integrating x or y first. And we'll start with type 1, which is still integrating uh, y first and then x. And uh, as you see from the picture here uh, on the left, we think of the top and bottom boundaries as functions of x. Uh, the bottom uh, being y equals g1 of x, and the top being y equals g2 of x. So if we do that, then um, that's our bottom, and that's g1 of x would be the 1 half x there. And that's the top, g2 of x just equal one. So thinking of that uh, diagonal line as being the bottom and the horizontal line as being the top. And if that's the case, you then think of x going from a to b, uh, where a is the leftmost x value and b is the rightmost x value. And uh, so we would see that a equals zero, since we start at x equals zero. And then b equals two, since we go to x equals two. You can then write this out in set notation. I guess I had this stuff. So uh, you could, for the type one, relate x as just a regular inequality uh, between a and b. So x going from zero to two. And then your two functions for the top and bottom, one and one half x. Uh, and then we would get this region d uh, we'll use d subscript one for this. And the set of all ordered pairs such that the first coordinate is between zero and two, and the second is between half the first and one. And that allows you to set up the limits of integration when we go to the integral notation. So if you find it works better, you could then set the integral up right away here. I have us, while we're still kind of looking at this picture both ways, um, find the type two region, but feel free to adapt based on your learning preferences. Uh, and so we see that in the picture with the type two region, we're thinking of the left and right boundaries <clears throat> being functions of y. The left is h1 of y and the right is h2 of y. Um, so for us, we'd be looking at 
H1 would be equal to uh, zero, right? The line Y equals zero, or sorry, the line X equals zero. Uh, so H1 is X as a function of Y, right? So that's X equals zero. And then we'd have to take this same diagonal and now instead of thinking it as the bottom of the shape, thinking of it as the right side. And so we need to invert that equation and solve for x as a function of y. So x is 2y, and so h2 is 2y. y now goes between the lowest point and the highest point, and so c is the lowest y value is 0, and then uh, c equals 1 is the highest value. So for a type 2, y goes between 0 and 1, and h1 of y is 0, h2 of y is 2y. And so this is the other way to describe that same region set of all order pairs, such that the second coordinate is between 0 and 1, and the first coordinate is between 0 and twice the second. All right, with that information, we're now ready to set up the type 1 and type 2 integrals for this problem. All right, so let's set up our type one double integral. For that, we'd be using D1. And uh, just before, with the rectangular regions, the type one integrates Y first and then X. And so we would integrate, uh, they're both integrating the same function, which is X squared E to the XY. Um, but we would do dy first, and so we would use the y limits uh, go from x over 2 to 1. And then the x limits go from 0 to 2. Let's compare that with the uh, type 2, where we use d2. So same integrand, x squared e to the xy, but now we integrate x first. And so we would go from 0 to 2y. So it's nice having those inequalities right there. They tell you exactly what to do. And then dy, which goes from 0 to 1. So you should always have constants for your limits of integration in the outer integral. Um, but now, instead of having constants on the inside one, we can have them be functions of the other variable, the variable you integrate with second. Um, and so when we evaluate that inner integral, we'll use the fundamental theorem of calculus, and we'll just put in that other variable, and then it will get integrated next. So at this point, we want to decide which way to do this, type 1 or type 2. 
um, which one is easier or which one is even possible. Um, and so just thinking about whether the variable of integration is x or y, um, x would be more complicated, right? Um, because we've got that x squared in front of the exponential. And so you thinking of x as the variable of integration would have to use integration by parts twice to do that one by hand. Um, so thinking of y as the variable integration, this type one looks easier. So we're gonna go with that one. Then we go to step four, we evaluate that inner integral. So the integral of from x over two to one of x squared e to the xy dy. And uh, thinking of y as the variable of integration, the antiderivative of this is going to be x e to the xy. So we evaluate that when y equals x over 2 and y equals 1. When y equals 1, we get x e to the x. And then when y is x over 2, we get x e to the x times x over 2. There's a point there, right? And so we get x e to the x minus x e to the 1 half x squared. Right. So it still goes to a function of one variable, and it's the variable we're going to integrate with next. And that's step five. We do the outer integral. So the outer integral uh, is the integral from zero to two of this result from step four. So x e to the x minus x e to the one half x squared. And that's still a little challenging. Um, with this first piece in particular, uh, we need to do a very basic version of integration by parts. So we'll be taking the derivative of the x part and the integral of the exponential. So uh, you just start with the part you're going to take the derivative of, and then integrate the part you're going to integrate. But e to the x is its own integral. And then minus the integral of then take the derivative of the part you're going to take the derivative of, which is one, and then integrate the part you're going to integrate e to the x. Um, and then, of course, this is still from zero to two. Um, before we get to the other part, let's just finish this. Uh, that second integral is just e to the x, and so you get x e to the x. Uh, and then we'll do it all evaluated from zero to two. All right, so for the x times e to the one half x squared, um, you don't need integration by parts there um, because the x in front accounts for the uh, derivative of the exponent. Um, and so the antiderivative there is just e to the one half x squared, right? Because the derivative of the exponent is x. And so it's already set up there. All right. So this all gets evaluated when x is zero and when x is two. When x is zero, um, the first term zero and then the other two are just negative one and negative one. Um, when it's two, so we get two e squared minus e squared minus e 
to the one half times four, but that's another e squared. Um, so that's actually just zero. And then when it's zero, yeah, we said we get zero. Um, minus one, minus one. And so that gives us a two, right? It's a minus a negative two, so a positive two. And that ends up being our answer, two. So this represents the volume between the surface defined by the function in the xy plane with positive volumes being above the xy plane and negative volumes being below the net signed volume. And we're now ready to validate. So there's a couple things you can do here. Um, yeah, one of them is to differentiate. You can calculate using the other type. You can use technology. And then we can look at um, the volume uh, on the graph and try to kind of interpret it. Let's differentiate first. So with that validation, we'd be checking this and this, right? So checking the first one, we'd be doing a y derivative of x e to the x y. And so you get that x times the exponential back. Um, but then the chain rule would tell you, you want the derivative of the exponent, which is another x. And so you get x squared e to the x y. So that's good. Um, for the other one, we'd be looking at an x derivative of x e to the x minus e to the x minus e to the one half x squared. Uh, with the product rule in the first part, the derivative of x is one times e to the x plus x times the derivative of e to the x. e to the x is its own derivative. And then with this last one, we want the derivative of that exponent, which is one half times two x or just x. Uh, and so these e to the x's add to zero, and we get x e to the x minus x e to the one half x squared. And so that checks that. Looking at the type two region, we had that. Oops. And we could try that. So this inner integral, integral from zero to two y, x squared e to the x y dx. So that's going to require integration by parts twice. So we're taking the derivative of the x part and integrating the exponential. So um, the part we're going to differentiate, and then the integral of the other part um, with respect to x gives us a, a 1 over y minus uh, integral. Then we do the derivative, which is 2x, and then we have the part we're going to integrate integrated. 
And now we'd repeat one more time. So still taking the derivative of the x part um, and then, but keep the, maybe put the one over y with it and then integral of the exponential. So I'll have two x over y and then the integral of the exponential gives us another one over y uh, and then switches to positive. And then the derivative of the two x over y with respect to x is two over y. And then the integral gives us another one over one. And then we integrate that one last time. And it gives us one more one over y. And that's all from zero to two y. So replacing x with two y, we get uh, four y's. Well, these all have an exponential. Let's factor that off. Let me go over here. Let's factor off the exponential. All right, so when x is 2y, we get e to the 2y squared. And then 4y squared over y is 4y. 2 times 2y is 4y over y squared is 4 over y. And when x is 0, you just get e to the 0. And then you get 0 minus 0 plus 2 over y cubed. Well, so that's the first integral. Then we would go to the second integral, uh, which is the y one, and integrate from zero to one. Um, and again, we get kind of stuck here, uh, trying to do this by hand. Um, because of the exponential and then those those rationals. So specifically the exponential times the one over y and one over y cubed. Um, so it might be possible to do that with some parts, but um, that's where I would probably stop. So, you know, I do what's reasonable here when you're doing the other type by hand, that one's clearly pretty challenging, but it should give us the same result and we can check that with uh, technology. So let's shift over to using Python. We use this exact same uh, code here that uses SymPy. Um, so we looked at this before. So import SymPy is SYM. We've got your two variables here. Define our function x squared, uh, and then this will be sim.exp for the base e exponential, x1. All right, so to check the type one, we would do the y integration first. And you just put the functions in here. So the so first lower limit is x over two, upper limit is one, and then x integrates from zero to two. So we'll quickly get that to answer. 
Let's try the type two and see if it takes a little longer. So that would be integrating x from zero to two y and integrating y from zero to one. Oh, classic mistake, right? Two times one. Ah, oh, that was still pretty quick. So it didn't chug like it did with that other type two. Um, or maybe you could have done that by hand. I uh, don't have the patience for that. Um, finally, let's look at uh, a graph and kind of interpret this. I feel like these, we don't have a good way to interact with the graphs in our setup, though I know that you can with matplotlib make these 3D graphs more interactive, but um, with the current way we're running things, can't. Um, so I'm going to use GeoGebra and just define the function x y equals x squared e to the x y. Um, and then what we want to do is um, restrict the domain. And so go ahead and put a comma and then in parentheses set up the domain restriction. Right? So we use the type one restrictions, but zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to two. And then outside the parentheses, comma, space, list the other restriction. In parentheses as well, um, which is x over two, is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to one. And it will actually isolate off that piece of the function for us. It's just that little sliver. And then it's a matter of getting a nice view. I would go to tools and go to move graphics view, we can bring the z-axis down a little. And then we really want to kind of zoom in by scrolling the mouse and then recenter as needed. Remember x is going from zero to two, and y from zero to one. That's probably pretty good. And then I guess we bring z down a little more. And z the edge of it. And go back to rotate 3D graphics. And so you've got a nice picture of this piece of the surface that we're integrating under. And it's the volume is the space between that surface and the XY plane. Now, if that's a familiar geometric shape, you can kind of use a familiar geometric formula. Um, and uh, for this, the closest thing I can think of is that this is like a, like a pyramid, right? And so you know, you've got your pyramid base, and then you've got the, the height, and this is the volume that we want. Um, and in general, when you have this kind of shapes, the volume is um, like one third base times height. Uh, 
Um, but I think because of the weird shape where it's kind of mostly flat and then it gets really high up at the edge there, um, that that might get you into a little trouble and get you kind of a big overestimate. It would it would kind of give you the volume of that. And because of the concavity of this thing, that wouldn't really work. Um, but we can still use the area of the base um, and then instead of using the height, use kind of an average value of the function. So what is the area of the base? Made it up. See, it's just a triangle. Uh, so one half base times height. And uh, we can think of the base as the horizontal, which is two, and the height is one. And so this is actually just an area of one, right? It's half of a two by one rectangle. Um, so area is one, and then we multiply by an average value. So again, it was like really high up on that corner because of the exponential. And then it was down at zero here. And so, you know, what do you pick for kind of your, your average value? So pick some value in the middle, um, the middle here, one. And then the middle here, kind of picking the centroid roughly um, using three quarters. And so that point one, Three quarters is roughly in the middle of this. Um, and then we evaluate the function there. So it's x squared times e to the xy. So we get e to the three quarters, uh, which is about two. So and then we multiply those. So that's our average value. So the volume is the base times the average value of the function. One times two is two. And we look out and we get a very good approximation, but you need to kind of play around with these functions when they're really complicated. And then also if there's some part of the function that's above the xy plane versus below, um, you need to account for that with positive and negative volumes. All right, um, well, that is gonna do it uh, for double integrals over general regions. Um, next up, we look at, uh, instead of using rectangular coordinates, using polar coordinates. We'll see you in that next methodology.